In this video, I'm going to share with you the most common mistake with turbos, and also I'm going to share with you how much oil pressure you should run to your journal bearing turbocharger. So the most common mistake is having this type of oil drain that is too small. And I've mentioned this before, and I've talked to people several times over the phone about this. The issue is that when this is too small, then the oil backs up into the cartridge and it has nowhere to go but out the seals. So what people think that they need to do because of this is reduce the oil pressure coming in. But that's actually not what you want to do. And the reason why is because if you're reducing the oil going in, you're reducing the cooling to this turbo that this turbo needs in order to prevent the seals from wearing out. So, with that said, if you have a large enough oil drain, then you can run as much oil pressure as you want to this turbo. And I really don't want to mention this again because I've had so many people ask me over and over again, well, how much oil pressure should I see at the turbo? That's not the point. The point is you run as much oil pressure as you possibly can to a journal bearing turbo. The difference is if you're having a blowing oil issue, then the drain is the problem. Now let me show you the size of this drain. This drain is 10 mil, actually it's not even 10 millimeter. It's 9.95 millimeter inside diameter. It's a 10 AN. Now a factory oil drain straight off of a car is 16 millimeter inside diameter. That's a six millimeter difference in oil flow to your oil pan. And you wonder why your turbo is blowing oil. So some points I do want to make here is that the whole sets from factory actually do have a 20 millimeter oil drain. That's double what you see here. So most of the turbos that I see that come here, it's actually because the oil drain is just too small. And a lot of people don't understand that until I get it and I tell them, you know, the problem. And they can choose to fix it or not to fix it. But if they don't fix it, then the turbo is blowing oil again and it's right back where it started and everything. So stay away from these 10 AN oil drains. And I'm going to show you what you can do and what I have done to fix this problem. Now you'll see that this fitting here, not the blue part, but this uh, silver part, that's an aluminum fitting. This is like a, uh, I think it's a three-fourths pipe thread fitting. So you can thread a three-fourths pipe thread fitting in that. I, I go to my local hardware store and I get a barb fitting that's a three-fourths that goes directly into this. And the, uh, the outlet is designed for uh, like a heater hose or a coolant hose or a, you can use a stainless steel braided hose on that. And that will be a 5 8 like a 5 8 drain. And the inside diameter of those is around 16 to 17 millimeter, which works really well. Now, if your turbo is blowing oil for another reason, it could be because, and it, it, let's say it's a brand new turbo, like this one's, you know, it's relatively new and had this problem. But it could be blowing oil because of the oil level that's in the car. So if the oil level sits, that's in the oil pan in the engine is this high to where it can blow out the seals really easily, that would be an issue. Now on my car... The issue I had was the turbo was mounted too low, too close to the oil pan. So if I had parked it uh, in, a, in the wrong way to where oil, the oil level was towards the turbo, the oil would be leaking out the seals just naturally. Now, if in normal driving condition, because the oil siphon is sucking up the oil, it would have no problems at all blowing oil. But like I said, if just because being in the park position with the car sitting on a hill, then it would have an issue with the oil uh, leaking out the seals. Hey, look what just showed up.
another turbo with another oil drain problem. Let's measure the drain on this and see what kind of measurements we get out of it. So I've already measured this. This is actually 12 millimeter inside diameter. This turbo factory comes with a 16 millimeter inside diameter drain. So like I mentioned before, this is another case where these people are buying these drains and it's causing the oil to back up in the cartridge and be forced out the seals. Now I could probably go uh, around and pick out all the turbos off the shelf here that have this issue and we can go with this all night long if you want to. Here's another great example. I see a lot of these TDO3 turbos and a lot of them are blowing oil but they're in perfect condition on the inside. If you haven't already noticed, there's an oil deflector that's covering up half of the drain. This is why we actually have a revised oil deflector that doesn't extend all the way from side to side so that you get a little more oil flow out the drain. If you'll notice on this turbo, it has absolutely no shaft play. Actually, it may have some in and out. Yeah, it's got some in and out. Let me, let me try and grab another one and see what we got. So here's the other twin. Is this a twin turbo car? This one, I mean, I think it has about the same amount of shaft play, but that's probably normal though. But like I said, you could see how much this was blowing oil. And they made these like this from the factory. So some turbos do have problems leaking oil from the factory. There's just people that don't realize it. Like the Veloster, the Hyundai Veloster, those will blow oil from the factory. So what we do is actually port this drain out on them. And on this one, you can probably see that this one can probably be ported a little bit too. The drains are a little bit smaller on these smaller turbos. But um, yeah, we try and do everything we can for these. But mostly for the factory stuff, usually it's right though. So here's our revised oil deflector on the TDO3. This is a setup that I already rebuilt. You can see how it doesn't cover up as much of the drain, drain area. So it's like it's cut back some. So that way it will help prevent having problems from oil getting backed up in the cartridge and being forced out the seals. Oh, by the way, here's a quick look at our nine blade drop-in turbines for the TDO3. So to finish this video, I want to answer the question of how much oil pressure do turbos normally see on a factory vehicle? To answer that question, it's going to vary because some cars are actually fed from the cylinder head Meaning, if you don't know this, a lot of the cylinder heads, or at least the cars that I've worked on, have a restrictor in the cylinder head to limit the oil pressure to the cylinder head for the cams, the lifters, and etc. The reason being is if a lifter is like stuck, plumbed up, I think it can like bend a valve or something. Anyway, so, uh, with the restrictor, sometimes it's 8 PSI at idle, is what it's supposed to be at the head on a DSM. Now, with that said, uh, some vehicles actually do have the oil pressure fed off the uh, oil filter housing, and they usually see 70 PSI oil pressure, which is perfectly fine. Like I said before, you want to run as much oil pressure as you can possibly can but also be able to effectively drain it. If you can't effectively drain it, then you need a larger drain and not necessarily restrict the oil pressure. In my opinion, or in my experiences, I've always had issues trying to restrict the oil pressure going in, but I've never had an issue where I ran the maximum amount of oil pressure without a restrictor and then just ran as large as a drain as I possibly could. But that being said, often the uh, often the 10 a.n. drains have a problem just because of the inside di diameter issue. So I've always used the heater hoses, and they're like 5 eighths heater hoses or something like that. And they're like 
uh, yeah, they're like 16, well, the fitting that, that the hose fits on is like 16 millimeter inside diameter, 16 to 17, and then the hose is even larger than that. So I hope that this video was helpful to you, and please stop asking me the same question, because I get this question like all the time. And this video is just supposed to be a tutorial on to explain to you the issue with oil pressure and why you need to stop restricting the oil pressure to the general bearing turbos. So thanks for watching this video, and please leave a comment if you thought this was helpful.